Good morning. It is Friday, the 16th of April. It's day 1,750,000 of lockdown. And it is so good to be with you all today. And we have the wonderful Tamar. Good morning, Tamar. How are you? Good morning. Good to see you. Lovely to have you on this morning. Well, we have been doing a wonderful series in lockdown called Heroes. And if you haven't been on this series of devotionals of the last two weeks, where on earth have you been? It is the best thing happening on the Isle of Man at the moment. And we are going to continue our series today as we look at our final hero of lockdown. We've been looking at some of the biblical heroes, the female heroes of the Bible, and we have some had some incredible input. But before we get started, guys, share, share, share. We want this message to go as far and as wide as it possibly can. So please do share on your timelines just now. And we really want to give a big shout out to all those who have been involved. I think our pastors have done an incredible job over all three lockdowns of feeding you guys so well. So I want to take my hat off to our pastors and leaders. Well done, our elders who have been involved as well. And I want to give a big special shout out to the following. So drum roll, please. To Kaz, to Leah, to Caitlin, to Marlene, Annette, Maddie, Sue, Panda, Nikki, and today Tamar as well. We've had some great gifts in our church who have been sharing on these devos in the last week or so. So we just thank you so much. You brought such great food for us and we just want to thank you very much for all that you have done. Well, today we have saved some fine wine for our final devo of lockdown and we have the wonderful Tamar. Tamar, are you doing well today? I'm doing very well, thanks, you. And yeah, all very good, thanks. That's so good. And anything exciting happening in your life, or is it just steady as she goes? I mean, a couple of weeks, maybe something happening that we all need to know about. Yes, yes, yes. I'm very excited. I'm getting married in two weeks' time to the wonderful wow. Gordon. <laughs> Gordon, to my fellow Scotsman, that is such good news. Was it the accent that made you choose Gordon? Oh, absolutely. I thought so, because it can't be that big hairy moustache. <laughs> yeah. Is he going to shave before the wedding? You ask him. <laughs> I'll, ask, I'll tell him. I'll tell him. You tell me what to do. But it's wonderful to have you this morning. And Tamar's going to be talking to us in just a few moments about one of the Marys of the New Testament. But I thought I should give us some clarity, because there are a number of Mary's in the New Testament. This is not Mary, the mother of Jesus. This is not Mary Magdalene. It's not Mary of Jacob. It's not Mary of Clopas. This is Mary of Bethany, the sister of Lazarus and Martha. And in just a few moments, Tamar's going to be taking us through John 11 and 12. So if you have your Bibles, why not open to those passages and we can follow along there. But I do want to remind you just before we get started, Church Online this weekend is going to be incredible. Jono's bringing a great word from Nehemiah 8. I advise you to read that passage beforehand. It's about the story of Ezra and the Word, revival in the Word. So do join us on Sunday morning, 10 30, for our final Church Online. It will still go on after we come out of lockdown, but for most of us, it's going to be the final one as we go back to normal life next year. Hoorah! Well, guys, Tamar is a great gift to us. She has such a heart for the Lord. I can't think of anyone better to be bringing this devotional than her. She reminds me of what I read of Mary in the scriptures. Very prophetic. Somebody who pours her life out for Jesus and lives a real Jesus first life. So I really want to encourage you. Open your hearts to her and to the word that the Lord brings through her. And let's hear what she has to say. So, Tamar, over to you. Thanks, Ewan. Um, I'm just going to read this. Yeah, so I want to speak about Mary um, of Bethany. And we meet her three times, only three times in the Word, but she has such an impact on, on, on showing us. And, and actually, I think there's the potential to see that there's something that moves the heart of Jesus, which I think we often overlook. So the first time we meet her is a, a picture is painted for us of Bethany and this little cluster family, Lazarus and Martha and Mary, his two sisters. So I have this picture of this happy family, and it's a home where the scriptures actually say that Jesus loved them. So he had a relationship with them. And we see in Luke 10 how um, 
he is on his way from Jerusalem. Bethany was about two miles away. So he's walking along and he stops in for a meal. He might be staying over. But we see how inside this little setting, there's Lazarus, his friend, and then there's Martha, who is busy. The, the, the rabbi has come, the teacher, their friend, Jesus, and they know who he is. They know he's the Messiah. He's come for dinner. He's there. He's there to eat. And she's rushing around and she's prepping and she's getting everything ready. And then we see that there's Martha. And Martha, it says, was sitting at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. And of course, now you can imagine this. And um, I, mean, I mean, we're all Marthas. We want to serve him and we want to do stuff. And she's just very distracted and running around and prepping and she came to him and she's a little bit annoyed by now because her sister's not helping. And she's saying, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. So there's a familiarity with Jesus. It's like, will you just please tell her to help me? We've prayed that prayer. Can you tell so-and-so to help me? Anyway, it's interesting because his reaction is, Martha, Martha, you're worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. And I want you to remember the word chosen. He actually defends her choice to sit at his feet. And I just love that. Um, there was a need to be busy, and Martha didn't do anything wrong here. The second time we meet is the time where there's a sadness in this little setting of Bethany in the home of Lazarus, because now Lazarus has died. And it's two days later when Jesus approaches the home and he's quite a way off when Martha again acts on this and she runs out to meet him and she said, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. We don't see a reaction from him to her per se, but she goes back and she calls Mary and her words to Mary is, the master is calling for you. So there was a reaction from him. Where's Mary? Mary's in the house and of course she immediately gets up and she goes and finds him and she meets him there and the first thing that she does and she's grieved and she's actually been sitting in the house with a number of the Jews that they love and that have come out to grieve with her but she rushes out and she's with him and she falls at his feet and it says that she says Lord if you had been here my brother wouldn't have died and we read that in that, when he when he hears that and he sees her weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and he was troubled. So he'd come because he knew this was the right thing and he had a plan why he came on the third day to raise um, Lazarus. But that's something Ewan can explain. The fact is Jesus wept when he saw her grieving and as she pours out her grief again at his feet, she fell down actually stirs him to emotion. I'm going to jump to the third time we meet him, uh, uh, Mary. Now it's six days before his crucifixion, and Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. He knows that he's going to die in six days, but he stops in with his friends in Bethany. And it's, it paints the picture, Lazarus is sitting at the table, and obviously the girls should be busy preparing. He's there. It's beautiful. And... Um, Everyone is happy and they're going to eat together. But again, Mary's not doing what we're expecting her to do. She's not helping her sister. There's something prophetic that's happening. And this is what he points out. Mary comes up and she has a beautiful uh, alabaster jar of nard, a very expensive ointment. And we read that she breaks this. You actually break the neck of this and she pours it over his feet. And she dries it with her hair. And um, the house was filled with the fragrance of this. And, of course, immediately again, there was someone who accuses her um, of doing this. And the first time it was her sister saying, tell her to help me. And here it's Judas who says, this is a waste of money. This money could have been given to the poor. Why? You know, like, can someone just do something about this silly woman's approach? And again, Jesus defends her and he says, leave her alone. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. So we see three times what stands out to me that she does 
not what comes naturally, what everyone else is expecting her to do. But she first goes and she sits at his feet. She comes and she does something for him. And in that, first time bringing her worship, bringing her adoration, just sitting listening to him. The second time bringing her grief, falling at his feet with her grief. And the third time just bringing everything, everything, her, her most costly possessions. It was a year's wages, it says, um, the volume that she would have brought with this nard, this beautiful special perfumed oil. She brings it all. She doesn't do what comes naturally. And he says in the beginning, in that first encounter, he says she chose the better way. So what is Martha then just messing around? Is that not a good way? No, it's a good way. But he says she chose the better way. And the way I see that for us is really exciting. Because if you think for eternity, we're going to be worshiping him. It's amazing. For eternity, we're going to be hearing him. We're going to be listening to him. But right now on earth is the only time that we actually have where we choose. We go out of our way to sit still. The natural inclination is to get out there and to do stuff. The natural inclination is not, just now is we're busy praying for revival. We need to get out there. We need to be talking to people. We need to be doing stuff. We're leaving lockdown now. And I think all of us is just rearing to go. We are. We can't wait. I can't wait to get out there and get going and do stuff again. But what is Jesus saying touches his heart? The better way is be still. Come and sit with me. Come and listen to me. Come and let me equip you. Come and spend time in my presence. Come and let that fragrance of my presence make you just do what I want you to do. Let my love that I fill you with compel you to go out and take that fragrance with you. And Elspeth had a, a word this morning where the Lord says, I am enough that you need. And I think it's beautiful that he says that to us because there are hard times coming. The pictures he had was of the sea turning to blood and the stars falling. That's hectic, dramatic stuff, and it could be scary for all of us. We're going to be in that if we live that long on earth. But he says, I am all you need. If we're rushing around doing and coping and striving, we might not have all we need. We might be operating from a place of the natural I think we can learn from Mary that what touched his heart is to be still. And then we know who he is and we know what he can do and we can involve him in every aspect of our life. And when I'm in his presence, I get to know a different side of him and I get to know a different side of myself. There's a different version of me when I'm in the Lord's presence and there's a different um, strengthening. There's a different peace that only he gives. Paul says it surpasses my understanding. It goes beyond my emotions. And that's what I want. That's what I want. I want to sit with him. And I want to hear him. And I want to feel him. And I want to get to know him. So that when I go out, I can differentiate and I can discern. And I can know. And it's easy. And it's not me. But it's me being strengthened by his spirit. So, yeah, you and I don't know if you want to add and or pray for us into that. I love that word. That's a wonderful word, Tamara. And as you were speaking, I just I was reminded of the words that the Lord spoke through Samuel, that obedience is better than sacrifice. And obedience in biblical terms means to listen and to hear. I just had that beautiful picture of Martha doing all the sacrificial things, all the things that need to be done. But it was Mary that listened. It was Mary that heard the voice of the Lord. And obedience is always better than sacrifice. And I think it's so easy for us to get caught up in the daily events of ministry, of church, of being a Christian. But actually what the Lord is calling us to is often come and sit at my feet. Come and hear my voice. That's what his sheep do. They listen, they hear his voice and they follow him. So I thought it was a wonderful Wonderful word for us. Thank you so much. And um, it would be great to get Tamara to do um, about a month's worth of these. I loved listening to her. So it's not the last time, Tamara, hopefully the last time in lockdown, but I'd love to hear you teach more on this aspect of God. But thank you so much for that great, great word. It's such an encouragement this morning. Well, guys, we have come to the end of our lockdown devotionals, and that is great news because it means that we are coming out of lockdown on Monday, and that is so, so good. But I want to encourage you 
when the devotionals are finished, it doesn't mean that your time with the Lord is finished. It means that you must now do your own thing. You must search his word for nuggets of truth. You must continue to seek him out, to do what Mary did. I loved what Tamara said. She brought her worship. She brought her grief and she brought her everything to Jesus. And that is the life that we must live in these days to come. Bring everything to the Lord. That's what he's looking for. People who will lay down everything for him. I'm just going to pray for us and close and then we will see you hopefully at church in a week's time live, but of course on Sunday, church online for the final time of this lockdown. Father God, we thank you for the example of Mary. We thank you, Lord God, for that heart that just longed to sit at your feet. Lord, we love the example that she brought of pouring out this expensive perfume, pouring out everything that she had over you. It was not a waste to her. It was well spent. And we want to spend our entirety on you. We want to spend all that we are over you, Lord. We want to anoint your feet. We want to minister to you with our worship. We want to please you with our obedience, Lord. And we want you to find what we bring acceptable and pleasing in your sight. So would you help us, Lord? Would you raise us up as worshippers in your house, as people who devote ourselves fully to you and help us, Lord, to be a standard of worship on this island, a model for other people to look at. And maybe some people like Judas will despise what they see, but others will be inspired. Others will find Jesus through the example of servants who lay their whole lives down for you. So would you help us, Lord? to live life, to minister to you, to worship you in the way you want to be worshipped. We ask these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. Uh, I just want to say one final shout out to our tech team. The tech team works so hard in the background. So thank you to Dave and the team for all of the incredible resources you produced for us through devotionals and to James and the team for all the hard work that goes into the online services as well. We really love you guys. We thank you. And Ben as well, of course, at Bob, doing an incredible job helping us to reach nations even in lockdown. But guys, thank you so much. Do share this. Send it to a friend if you think it will help them. Tell your friends they can watch on demand. And we'll hopefully never see you again in lockdown. But it's been great to be with you this morning. God bless you and have a great day. Bye.